up guys nightwing way of life esports coming at you guys with another league of legends video and we have some good news brock says visa finally gets approved and that's a very good thing because now team liquid won't have to use shurnfire i think shurnfire was not that bad i think he was a scapegoat for a lot of other issues that team liquid actually was going through but broxa is now going to be able to play with team liquid we have no confirmation yet when it's actually gonna be the week he can play but that's finally the best news i've heard for the man you could tell he was so sad on his stream you know when he couldn't play with them you know you sign this deal in the offseason you want to be there opening day for the lcs your new team you want to prove to fanatic you know they got rid of the wrong guy and you know, he couldn't do it, and he was always saying, you know, hashtag TL win on his Twitter, and he finally gets to play with his team. I'm really happy that I get to see him. When I do go to the LCS, me and my friends are kind of setting it up right now, trying to see a day where we can actually do it, so I'm really happy that when I do go, if Team Liquid is playing, and they do a little fan meetup, I will be getting a picture and something else with him. I'll probably give him something, too. Probably give him, like, a... What should I give him, actually? I'll give him something. This man's been really putting work in for all these past years, and he was the scapegoat on Fnatic, and that really made me mad, because he wasn't, uh, it's, I'm not gonna go over that right now, but Brox's visa gets approved, and today he obviously made a long video about it on Twitter, and then I'm really happy that he actually um, was able to, you know, finally get it overall because visas are really complicated with like citizenship and all this other nonsense but yes broxa gets his visa approved and i'm really happy for him congrats to you my european brula all right so let's go to the other news that actually happened uh, G2 versus Fnatic is obviously, um, you know, coming up tomorrow. Clash of the Titans. El Clasico. Just like TSM versus C9 for North America. KT Rolster versus SKT for LCK. And then I guess, isn't it EDG versus RNG for the LPL? That's like the big, like, old school rivalry. And then obviously for LEC, it's, you know, G2 versus Fnatic. The best two teams in the LEC. And then we have another following update. Is that Broxa won't be available for week three of 2020 LCS spring split hopes to join liquid for week four so we just got confirmation that he you know got his visa approved and he won't be playing for week three and then um let's see what's actually happened all right so liquid ceo steve architect told espn today that broxa won't be starting for liquid this weekend he's hopeful that he'll be able to move to north america in time for week four of the 2020 LCS spring split. However, Shurnfire will continue to man Brox's position while he remains in Europe. And then they tweeted about it uh, from ESPN. And let me actually, uh, I should read this fully, but they probably quoted most of it here. Liquid's performances over the past two weeks have, haven't been too strong. The team is tied for fourth place, meme, uh, with four other teams at two and two. Their losses to team Dignitas and Cloud9 were hard fought. But their true potential is yet to be unlocked with Broxa. The 22-year-old superstar was one of the best junglers in the LEC and was a key part of Fnatic during their run in the 2018 World Championship Finals. Many players in NA, in NA have suffered from visa issues this year, including Shunfire, who also had trouble before week one of the season. Evil Geniuses had to pick up jungler Onda and mid laner Fire after visa issues prevented their academy starters from reaching the US as well. Liquid has a couple of easier matchups this weekend, though with the Hunter Thieves and Golden Guardians loading up across them on Summoner's Rift, they'll try to keep things steady before Brox's possible arrival next week. Hopefully, he'll be able to get into the uh, LCS by week four. I'm I'm really, really, really itching to see uh, Liquid obviously being able to, you know, play with him. Uh, we know that, you know, Liquid will, will look a lot better with Broxa. Not saying Shurnfire's been playing really bad, uh, but he will look better because he is objectively just the better player, and that's just how it works with games, you know. When you have an objectively better player, you are gonna have much better results, given how strong they are. So, if you guys watched the LEC today, um, what happened was, is that Gilius, yes, was subbed out from Shaka, and it wasn't for Kikis, because most people are, are going to say it was for Kikis, if you guys actually watched the Shaka game, it looked pretty bad, and it's not all Gilius' fault that they were, you know, been going through a tough time and going through 0-4, Lorox, Lorox, that, that's the name, Lorox obviously subbed in today, 
and uh, it wasn't any better, honestly. It wasn't, I mean, it's, it's his first stage game, so I'm going to give him a little bit of a pass for that. But right now, I think that Schalke is pretty much the worst team in the LEC. I mean, it is still week three, but, like, guys, they're playing bad. And I feel bad for all the German fans that they have, man. They're just looking real bad, and they're probably going to be 0-6. I mean, let's be honest here. Like, is Lorax able to turn the team around? Like, it's not for Given's fault. He's still playing fine. Like, in a better team with better players, he would be a shining star. And I don't really know what's the problem. You know, maybe they're just not that good, you know, outside of Forgiven, and that's pretty much it. Maybe, you know, it's just not the people that are going to have the chemistry to work together. I think that this is just a roster of players that are not going to really work well. Even if they do find some stride to actually get some wins, I still don't think in the long run this is actually a roster that will actually have something to build upon because this is a type of roster that would win more games. Let's say they go 0-6, right? And then they start winning all of a sudden, right? I think that when they do start winning and hit that roadblock, I think that they'll come with the come up with the same problems that existed before, except that winning will kind of just cover up that, you know, part where they were losing. So, yeah, Schalke is looking real doomed out here, but, you know, let's see if it's going to really pay off for them. I mean, I don't know at the moment right now. Um, today, watching the LEC games, I'll be giving you guys my thoughts and opinions on the LEC, obviously after tomorrow, um, you know, when, you know, G2 and Fnatic finish off the week, I have tomorrow off. That's why I'm creating content, a lot of it tonight, actually. So, yeah, see you guys later. Like, comment, subscribe. Most of all, enjoy. I'm the Nightwing, and Way of Life Esports is signing out. Peace out. Peace out, guys. Bye. Subscribe to the channel for more stuff. Yeah, thank you.